Aloha Hawaii. I'm Wendy Lo, and I'm your dear friend as we journey to take your health back. We are coming to you live from downtown Honolulu from the studios of Think Tech Hawaii in the Pioneer Plaza building. Today, our topic of discussion will be on exceeding expectations, and I'll let Nathaniel share his special trait himself. What I would like you to take away from today's discussion is the idea that the only obstacle stopping you from success, whether it's healthy living or career choices, is yourself. I just had the opportunity to meet this stellar of a young man last week, Wednesday, at the WAMCAC, Waianae Military Civilian Advisory Council meeting, where he was being presented to share his journey. You know that I was so impressed and I had to have him come to my Think Tech Hawaii show to share with all my listeners his ordinary to extraordinary life's journey that I believe is just the beginning. So we'd like to welcome Nathaniel. Aloha. Thank you for having me. All right. So we got a lot to cover, a lot of great pictures that I want to share with everyone here. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I look at you, you're a handsome young man, <laughs> but you must have been a really cute kid when you were growing up. Can you just share a little bit about your childhood? Okay. Yeah. So I grew up in Waianae, Hawaii, um, where I went to Makaa Elementary School. And I, I, I went to public school all my life. So Makaa Elementary, Waianae Intermediate, and Waianae High School. And growing up, I had... Uh, ten siblings, so I have five brothers and five sisters, making eleven of us total. So that's basically the gist of it. Wow! I know that you came from a big family, and you're number ten of eleven. I was going to tell you, I ask you to tell us a little bit about that, and uh, but I thought I only have thirty minutes here. You better make it quick, telling me all about your family and everything. But you just did, and so I'm so excited that you of eleven children, your mom and dad must be so proud of every one of you. And of course, I'm sure you've got a special place in their hearts for accomplishing so much mm -hmm. that you have up to this point in your life. So what was it like growing up with so many siblings? Yeah, so growing up with 10, uh, ten siblings, um, most of them being older, so I, uh, I actually had ma many nieces and nephews that were my age, so it was pretty hectic. Um, we didn't get along at first, um, and the, when we were little kids, we would always fight. But of as course. we grew older, we grew to love each other, and so we hang out all the time every time I'm home. And they had me babysit uh, other kids, so I have 37 nieces and nephews. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a lot of influence input that everyone probably is like, guiding you, because you're kind of like the baby of the family, right. one of the babies. So they all want the best for you and encouraging you in every which direction. So how much and how did your family influence you in your career journey? Okay, yeah, so most of my siblings, um, being older than me, they had their own experience in life and I learned from them. So the older ones, most of them actually got their GED or a few of them. And then uh, as we got younger and younger, most of them started excelling in school. And then the two siblings above me uh, joined media. And so I followed in their footsteps in any media, they were in the advanced program and did media, so I decided to do media. And I, I was really inspired um, from my media teacher, Ms. Higuchi. Uh, she inspired all of her students to do well. And that's why Waianae High School is really world-renowned for their media productions um, division and departments there. I mean, I know I've been to a few events where I was exposed to that and very impressed. And I thought, what a great opportunity for those students to be exposed to that because you're going to capture their excitement and their interest that they're going to be productive in life. Right. As you were, you were very productive and uh, enjoyed media and production. So why didn't you continue that route in high school? Yeah, so um, at, at in eighth grade, we found out that we could take JRTC instead of PE. And I was like, I wanted to be a firefighter ever since I was a kid. And then I found out you could go and be a military firefighter earlier. Uh, in Hawaii, you could only be a firefighter at the age of 21. But at the age of 18, you can go into military. So I decided, okay, I want to join the military. So I joined JRTC in ninth grade to just try to figure it out and hopefully learn more about the military. But I also did media in ninth grade as well. And then uh, in the summer of after ninth grade, I had to decide if I was going to stick with media or JRTC. And I decided to stick with JRTC since it's more useful for my future career. Wow, what a brilliant um, career choice. And you know, as I sit in on the meetings for WAMCAP, which is a military involvement with the local community of the West Side, which I know uh, WAMCAC is headed by Lieutenant Colonel um, Rock yes. <laughs> Arakaki, mm -hmm. and a dear friend now because I just am so passionate about what he's doing with all of the West Side and just making sure that the military meshes well with the local 
um, environment and just mm -hmm. supporting each other in everything they do because we need each other. Right. The locals need the military to be there. The military needs the corporation of the locals out there. And if we could just continue to work together that way, how much smoother and better life would be because they can protect us in a lot. In, I mean, that's your job and that's what they're right. doing every day for us. So going to the ROTC program at Waianae High School and just, you know, going through all those great exercises, like I saw you going over the, the swamp, or what did you call it? The tilapia pond, yeah. right? <laughs> so going over that those, kind, that, those kinds of activities probably got you excited, and it was a fun as well as learning and the discipline. So how did all of this prepare you for going to West Point? Uh, yes, yeah, so JROTC definitely prepared me leadership-wise, so... They gave me leadership opportunities first as a, just a platoon sergeant, then a company commander, and then finally as a battalion commander, as you can see in this picture. Uh, so I led all the student JRTC students in Waianae High School. So they, provi uh, they, they provided me leadership opportunities. So JRTC isn't just to prepare you for the military, it's just to prepare you leadership-wise and just to be a good civilian overall. Most people have the concept that, oh, they're just for the military, but they actually help prepare you for college and just general life decisions. So that's a great piece of advice right there, guys. If your school has the JRTC programs, mm -hmm. that you should just get involved, just because it's another, uh, uh, like another curriculum that you could get involved with, or extracurricular activity that you could get involved with. And not just because you want to be in the military, but like Nathaniel mentioned, that it'll just give you a direction in life and discipline and, and I, I'm sorry to say this is not your case, but sometimes discipline is lacking in a lot of our students. Yes. And so they can't even handle the rigors of life because they're not prepared. So you're saying that ROTC did prepare you for life and now life in the military. Is yes, that correct? And not just life in the military, but they also teach uh, community service, which you talked about, Colonel Rock. So there's a big community service aspect. You get so many hours of community service and you learn work with so many different people it's it's great yes uh, i know kudos to colonel rock lieutenant colonel rock because um he is an amazing man i'm going to say young man because <laughs> he acts like a young man he's just in in every activity to get all the different rltc programs right. to work together i mean there's nanakuli high school there's mm -hmm. wainai high school and then of course i'm only speaking on the west side there are many other branches as well but they're doing a fabulous program and allowing you all to come out to volunteer in the community get that exposure to just prepare you for life. All right, so now you're going through uh, your junior and you're gonna start preparing for where you wanna attend college. Where did you apply for colleges? So I applied to West Point first. Um, so actually going, yeah, junior year I applied for West Point. Uh, they, they have this program uh, where it's called Summer Leadership Experience. And so I applied for that at first. And I didn't get accepted, but they said, hey, continue the application into uh, just the school itself. So I just continued that application. And then I also applied to Valley Forge and um, Virginia Military Academy and then Colorado School of Mines. So all military schools, I also applied for the ROTC scholarship in New York. Wow. So you apply for a few schools. You wait. You get the letter. Congratulations. You're now accepted to West Point. How did your family react to that? So my family was very excited. I think uh, everyone that found out about it was more excited than I was uh, when the news came out. So I actually found out <laughs> on Valentine's Day, but I was at my friend's house and my mom called me up and said, hey, you, was ex you were accepted into West Point. And then I was just like, oh, okay, cool. And my friend, he was like, hey, what just happened? I was like, I got accepted to West Point. And he was like, oh, uh, uh, wild. And like everyone was more excited about it than I would, it seemed like, so. Wow, it was, <laughs> it, I mean, it was so exciting uh, news the first Waianae alum to get accepted to West Point, and now you're a West Point graduate. That's, that's exciting. I mean, I'm, I, when I met you, I couldn't, I couldn't contain myself because I'm so proud of you from Waianae High School and also West Point Academy. I'm so excited for you. Um, what was going through your head when you got there, when you got to West Point, and then you realized, oh my gosh, I'm gonna be on my own from this point on. What's going through your head, boy? Um, so I actually got homesick um, after the first week, but I just realized, hey, I have to stick it out. I, after the news came out, I realized how much of an inspiration I was to the community. So I was like, I need to provide an inspiration to everyone else. Uh, actually, when the news came out, there's a little boy who knew my dad and he saw me on the news and he's like, oh, why is he on the news? And then his mom told him and he's like, 
oh, I'm going to be a doctor, and so maybe I can be on the news for that. So I, I realized I'm an inspiration to multiple people, so I need to stick this out for them. Uh, you have no idea, Nathaniel. You're going to, even by coming on to the show today, I mean, I just met you a few days ago. You had the courage enough to say, yes, Auntie, I want to share my journey. I want to inspire other students of Hawaii and the world that, you know, not just playing at this level, but just dreaming big and attaining your dreams by, how did you obtain these dreams? Hard work? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's, it's hard work and also a lot of uh, support from uh, the community and my family. Um, everyone just pushing me to do my better than that. And some teachers actually. So in ninth grade, I had a math teacher who inspired me to do work beyond the classroom because the classroom work was too easy. So he gave me an extra book to do work and learn higher level math on my own. So. Uh, I just love it as well. I mean, you're giving kudos to your teachers. And, you know, that's the backbone of where you are as well. I mean, of course, your family, as you said earlier, you know, the first, uh, I don't know, you even want to quote numbers, your older siblings, you know, um, they just went through life and now they are there to mentor you and encourage you and guide you and just, hey, you can do this, boy, just let's go, let's go. So they all, I don't want to say they rallied around you mm -hmm. and encouraged you. And then you had your teachers to support you at school to make better decisions mm -hmm. so that you will be guided in the right direction which obviously you are. And so you end up at West Point. What is a day like at West Point for you? Okay, so uh, we have two different class days. So you have day ones and day twos. And so depending on the regiment, so you'd have, everyone has class starting at 7.30 and a class goes all the way up to 11. And then um, from 11.30ish uh, to 12.30ish, we have lunch and then we have a Dean's hour study break, and then class again until 4. At uh, 4.30, we start company athletics. So either you do company athletics, which is just like intramural sports with cadets, or you actually train for sports. So like we have the football team and a wrestling team, a bunch of other sports. So depending on if you're a core squatter or not, that's, you do that sport or company athletics. And then on day twos, we drill, and then vice versa. So that last photo we saw, um, House of Tears. Was that just a photo op, or was it? Oh. What's the story behind the House of Tears? Okay, yes. So during the summers, we have trainings, and that that training was uh, my leadership experience. So I was able to be a squad leader for the new cadets coming in. And that House of Tears, we just finished the gas chamber. Uh, so that was us after the uh, gas chamber. So with a mask or without a mask? So you go in with the mask <laughs> and you take it off. You you recite your social security number and a bunch of other details. Then do. Uh, either a song or something, and then they'll let you out. Oh, wow. So real <laughs> hardcore training, yes. right? I mean, real tears shed. A lot, right? of, a lot of people throwing up tears, but it wasn't that bad. Like, uh, going through it a second time, uh, the first time when you go as a new cadet, it seems a lot worse than when you do it again. Like, for some reason, it doesn't seem as bad. <laughs> but that's all in preparation of, right? I mean, how much can you push with that much chemical warfare within your, yes. right in your face, I should say. Yes, it's, it's teaching you how to clear your gas mask if there is ever chemical warfare, but that hasn't happened for a while. So. Wow, but you're prepared. We are prepared. Yeah, you're like a <laughs> big boy, boy scout. You're prepared. <laughs> <laughs> so how did West Point prepare you for the military? Okay, yeah, so it prepared me um, for leadership-wise and also taught me a bunch of weapons training, and then it also... Uh, gave us opportunities to do internships. So my internship was actually with the business side of the Army. It's called the Acquisition Corps. So I was able to work with drones, so unmanned aer aerial systems. I was able to fly this uh, drone that you saw. It's called a Raven. So I was able to fly it. I was able to crash it, which is how it's supposed to land. You just turn it off and it'll crash land. So. Wow, you mean that was school? Hmm. No wonder you graduated with honors. No, no, that sounds like fun, but I know it's more than just that. So, Nathaniel, right now we are going to take a 60-second break, and uh, we're going to come right back to catch more of your journey and your fun and excitement at West Point. So we'll be right back. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, inviting you to come visit with us on Cannabis Chronicles, a 10,000-year odyssey where we explore and examine the plant that the muse has given us. And stay with us as we explore all of the facets of this planet on Wednesdays at noon. Please join us. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Yukari Kunisue. 
the host of Konnichiwa Hawaii, Japanese talk show on ThinkTech Hawaii. Konnichiwa Hawaii is all Japanese broadcast show and is streamed live on ThinkTech at 2 p.m. every other Monday. Thank you so much for watching our show. We look forward to seeing you then. I'm Yukari Kunise. Mahalo. Aloha. And here we are back at Think Tech Hawaii Studios. And we are privileged and very honored to have Nathaniel Endo, second lieutenant, graduate of West Point, and an alum alumni of Waianae High School. So Nathaniel was just sharing with us his grand um, experience of high school and growing up as a normal kid, and I just want to say an ordinary kid doing extraordinary things. And as a young man, as a graduate of West Point, just very inspiring to encourage others to just play at their highest game and not ever give up because all things are possible. And I truly believe that all things are possible through Christ. And so, you know, right now, I just want to ask you, uh, Nathaniel, what helped you to get through West Point on your high times and your down times? What helped you get through it all? Uh, yes, yeah, so West Point has a strong Christian community, so I believe God definitely helped me get through it. Um, and then the church group, so we, we had choir. I, I participated in the Protestant choir. And this picture is actually another cadet from Hawaii. Wow. He graduated from Farrington. Uh, he was a year ahead of me. But, yeah, so... Making those connections, they definitely helped get me through, and as well as the church group. That was a choir's uniform? So that was the West Point Cadet uniform, uh, but we, that was our most formal wear, and that's wow. what the choir would wear when we went out. See, I can't sing, but if I could wear a uniform like that, I would learn to sing. <laughs> oh, that is spiffy, boy. That looks phenomenal. I mean, so handsome. And I believe you worship at Waianae Assembly of God. Is that, is that correct? Yes, yeah, so I go to Waianae Assembly of God every time I'm at home. That's the church I grew up in ever since I was a kid. Wow, and kudos to the pastor and the family of that church for raising you up with the right heart and right, right, right faith. So, thank you. So, now what will you do in the Army that you're a graduate and then you're going to ship out soon? What will you do in the Army and what does it all entail? you got to explain to us, so okay. don't just give us some titles, okay? okay. Yeah, so, I'm going to be an air defense officer, so I'll be shooting any incoming missiles or any drones or any aircraft. So this is branch night, so me and my two roommates during branch night, one went engineers and the other went to field artillery. So the one on the right, or my left, is actually going to be going to Fort Sill, Oklahoma with me. Uh, we'll both be doing training for artillery. So he was, he's field artillery, and I'm air defense artillery. So those little um, designs on that card, is that telling you where you're going or what division you're going to? So that tells us the branch uh, that we are in. So uh, the one I'm holding is the shape of the air defense branch. Wow. That is our insignia. Okay, so now you, I, you're sharing with me your journey. You're going to leave here. You're going to go to your buddy's place in Florida, and yes. then you're going to end up where? Where are you going to be stationed? Okay, so first, uh, next month, I drive to, from Florida to Oklahoma, Fort Sill, Oklahoma, as well. I'll be at training for, as an air defense officer. But then I finally got stationed at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, so that's where I'll be going in December, and I'll be there for three years. So that picture showed Branch Night, which is all the places that we will be stationed. And wow. I was actually able to be stationed with my roommate that you saw earlier. Mm -hmm. So, how many locals, how many people from Hawaii were with, you, were with you in your first, in your entry class? There were eight in the entry class, but six graduated um, on time. And then there's one who was turned back for medical issues, so he'll be graduating in August. And then another will be graduating next year because of academics. So you all have a, a familiar bond of being Hawaiian. Yes. So when you were in school in West Point, did you all hang out? Did you guys crave Hawaiian food at the same time? What was it like? Care packages? What was it like? Uh, so most of us uh, hung out with the uh, friends we made well at West Point, but we'd get together every now and then. I would check up on a specific friend uh, from Kailua. She went to Sacred Hearts. Her name was Haley Pound. But um, I also met up with Shiloh Bagley to uh, make famosa bees in his room. So, oh, wow. And, and then another cadet uh, from Eva, he, his parents moved to Maine, uh, Maryland, or actually. So uh, we went to his house for Thanksgiving, and so I got to have some Samoan food 
So tell me, did you have a rice cooker in your dorm, in your room? I never personally had a rice cooker, but I had uh, another Japanese friend who did, so I would steal some of his rice every time he made it. <laughs> and you must have gone through a lot of rice, because that would probably be the staple oh. with everything else. Well, so mainly we ate in the mess hall, so we would have to eat at the mess hall every, every day um, in order to save money, but also lunch is mandatory to eat at the mess hall, and then breakfast was optional and dinner was optional. Okay, so we talk about mess hall food. Tell me a little bit about that. What was the quality of the food, or was it a variety of great vegetables and fruits? How healthy were your meals there? Uh, so they, they actually try to keep uh, healthy, like with, but they also give you protein, enough protein for the day, but they also have a salad bar, fruit bar, like so anyone who doesn't want to eat meat, they can just eat salad every day. So I'd have a salad for every dinner, and then eat fruits every breakfast. Wow. So you, you feel you had a very good, well-rounded nutrient level of intake? Uh, yes, I yeah. definitely did well. I was there. Oh, very good. Kudos to West Point. <laughs> I love hearing that. Right? Because you have to perform at your highest. So you need to feed your brain the food it needs mm -hmm. and also be physically um, receiving uh, nutrients physically so you can maintain the rigorous room chores and duties that they have required of you. Is that correct? Yes, especially during the summer. Uh, they, they, you eat a lot more than you usually would uh, because of the training that goes on during the summer. And so most people actually will gain 15 pounds because they have to eat a lot. So did you gain weight? Uh, yes, yeah, so I went in at like 145 and then at the end of that training I was 160. So was the weight good for you though? Uh, yes, yeah, so it's definitely all muscle mass that I gained right. during those right. training Right. And days. how tall are you, Nathaniel? I'm about 6'1". Yeah, you're pretty tall for one <laughs> local brother there. That's good. So a little, a little um, weight gain was, I mean, it's perfect for you. You look just perfect right now, especially in your uniform. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so how did your family support you while you were there in West Point? They were here, they were there, but you have some family members there as well. Near. Yes. So I have a sister who is in Virginia, so I'd go visit her on most uh, breaks, so Thanksgiving, and then I'd uh, go for Christmas. Then I had another brother who's in Tennessee, uh, so when I was in Alabama for my internship, uh, I would go and visit him in Tennessee, which was only two hours away. Wow, you know that picture, if you don't mind putting that back up, Rob. So that picture, I mean, that's like your whole family. Yeah, so that is my family today with all the nieces and nephews on it. So. Wow, that's more than a football team. Yes. <laughs> oh, you can play against each other and oh. still have a substitute <laughs> now for volleyball teams. So this is amazing. How blessed are you to have that many or that much love in your immediate family? I just want to congratulate your mom and your dad for doing, uh, having such a call to, to nurture such a family. And, and like I was asking you, you guys all like each other and you get along. So that's like, I mean, and even if 50% of you got along, that's still good. But you all do. And so I, kudos to your mother and your father for doing such a great job in having those many, that many children and then getting along as a family unit. Yeah, and then so, earlier we talked about how they inspired me in my early days. And then so after I got into West Point, all of them started going back to, all of my sisters started going back to college. So uh, it seems like I inspired them. So, so you know, your job is done. <laughs> I mean, right? They had you then and they used you as an inspiration. You started with inspiring your family. And then even from that point, every other kid in ROTC in the YNI program and other programs, because, I mean, if you were here in Hawaii, I would put you in front of many organizations and groups just to showcase that anything is possible and all things are possible yes. and so I'm so grateful that you lived up to it and you made that happen okay so when was your graduation from West Point uh, it was May 25th 2019 so just a month ago Wow okay and so of your family members how many of them came up who came up to be with you on that special day uh, uh, so two of my sisters were able to make it up with all of their kids and then one of my brothers and then my mom and dad so uh, those are the immediate family members that were able to make it up. And then we had uh, my auntie and my grandma was able to come up um, to celebrate with us. As well. Wow, special. And I see you have your lays there and everything. Oh. So, and, But the other graduates, the other, there were six of you, right, from Hawaii, you said? Yes. Six. So their families also came up to give them lots of aloha. Yes. Uh, so I, I went and visited them. Uh, and then I also spread aloha uh, with the lays um, that I had. So I, I asked my mom them to bring up lace so I could give to others. Oh, special, <laughs> special. So I think that's another good recruitment for West Point. Keep bringing the Hawaiian kids up there. 
They bring lots of aloha, right? <laughs> yes. And they make the whole journey, that tough journey, a little bit more doable because you guys bring up so much heart and aloha. Mm -hmm. And that's important when you're to, to create well-rounded officers, I believe. Right? So, I, I, I mean, I just, I, I, when I met you, I was so intrigued because I, I, I couldn't get enough of this. I mean, I'm from Waianae. Uh, I'm right. from my claim to fame. You're the first alum from Waianae to graduate from West Point. Well, I'm the first kindergarten class at my elementary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no, no comparison, but that's, <laughs> that's what I am all about. Okay, so um, on the next picture, you're shown here with this cutie, this really cutie kid. The next officer coming up in your family. So tell us about this picture. Okay, yes, yeah, so this is my uh, youngest nephew. Uh, so he's uh, four months old in this picture. Um, so that's my sister from Virginia. That's her youngest boy. And so the hat actually is, so we no longer keep those white hats, so we throw it up for graduation, and then the kids are able to go and run up and get those hats, and we leave inspirational notes for them. And so one of, the, one of his siblings grabbed that hat and then put it on his head. But they wow. leave notes, so my niece was actually able to meet the girl that wrote her note. Well, I see we learned something new. I never knew that. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow, that's a tradition, long, long, yes. long tradition of West Point. Yes. And so when you throw up your hat, then they give you another one. <laughs> no, you, you're, so you're done with those uniforms, so you won't wear that hat again anyways. So oh. now you wear the officer's hat that you'll see in the last picture. Oh, the second lieutenant. Hat. Yes. <laughs> wow. So that one's even more um, prideful, I should say. You've earned this next oh, hat. Yes, definitely. Okay. So that's like a graduation cap. You just release it back and it goes to the person who retrieved it. And then the next, the cadets coming in from freshman year, they'll get their own. And Yes. Oh, wow. What a tradition. <laughs> okay. So going up to um, West Point, you're bringing a lot of aloha. Tell us on your day-to-day -day life in West Point, how did you display aloha while you were there? Uh, yes, yeah, so I shared aloha with uh, mainly my company mates, um, just by you know being daily inspiration and positive vibes. Um, a lot of, there's a lot of negativity that goes on at West Point because of how stressful it is. So uh, just being high spirited, and then also with those lays, I shared it with not just Hawaiian cadets but also some of the company mates that I made. Wow! So throughout your your time at West Point, you were just a display of aloha with your smile and just your easygoingness. Mm -hmm. But yet, yet your determination to finish up as an right. officer, yes. as you did. Wow. So on your next picture here, what's happening here in this picture? Okay, yes. So this is actually my commissioning ceremony. So where my parents are able to pin my bars on. So those are my second lieutenant bars that they have in their hands. So that's officially making me an officer. And then my sisters were able to hold the flag in the background. So my, I, every family member that came up was able to be a part of my commissioning ceremony. And my brother-in-law was actually my first salute because he was in the Marines. So. Wow, I'm just like, I wanna just tear up because it's, it's, it's amazing. I just, I'm so proud of you. And you have no idea. That's why I grabbed you and I said, you have to be with me. <laughs> and I wanna continue the relationship to bring you on when you come back to Hawaii. And I wanna put you in front of many other students that are just trying to figure out in life, what are they wanting to do in life? Right. And so Nathaniel, congratulations on your hard work, your determination and just going forward and being the proud representative that you are from Waianae High School to West Point and back to Hawaii and then the world. Our prayers go with you daily, and we just wish you all the best. We love you, and we just mahalo you. Oh, so you right now, much. we're just we're going to wrap it up and just say thank you to Nathaniel yeah. Endo, second lieutenant, graduate of West Point. Mahalo. Nathaniel. Mahalo.